sådan en helt langt os. Og de synger så ikke, den er kælderen Solana. Solana, den kan sødte andre nøgler. You're breaking the law. Could you please step aside and let us through? Wait a minute. Dempsey call. Now when you ride around on the on the plane, you see all the mountains all gone. All the trees are stripped clean. And it's not only for us, it's for white man's new generation to come to what, what they're going to make money on when they strip the island. Even at the time that I got involved with the Council of the Haida Nation, there wasn't much recognition or respect for our view of who we are as Haida. In British Columbia, a dispute over the future of a wilderness area in the Queen Charlotte Islands has led to a confrontation. The loggers and the Indians have been negotiating unsuccessfully for the past 12 years. This week, a group of Haida Indians began obstructing the passage of logging crews into the South Moresby area. trees used to be plentiful all along the coast. Today, the Queen Charlotte Islands are the last mother load of this green gold. Last Wednesday morning, a group of Haida came to Sedgwick Bay on Lyle Island to protect this lifestyle. You're breaking the law, and you're stopping us from going to work, and we ask you to step aside and let us continue. There will be no logging on the area that the Haida people have designated as not to be touched. This is Haida land, and there'll be no further logging in this area. We all seen the videos of you know the stand at Lyle. They did what they thought was right. They didn't bank on anybody caring or internationally community you know rising up to, to stand beside them. They just went out to take a stand because they had enough. These are our homelands. Exploitation of resources and in the management of, of these islands that the people who are here sharing these lands with us respect equally with everyone else, the aspirations and the values of the Haida Nation. We've been here for thousands of years. We intend to be here for thousands more. If you don't step aside, I'll have no alternative but to arrest you. Do you understand that? And we were getting ready. Again, all the young guys, the strong guys, we were expecting a battle, and they were ready. And... And, uh... The elders took over. It wasn't part of the plan. Ah. It came a point when we saw the extent of the devastation and knew that, that we had to stop. Diane Brown has talked about how if that didn't happen when it did, that it would have affected the future of the whole earth, not just Haida Gwaii, but everywhere, that it was a, a fork in the road that if we didn't do what we did, then it would have affected everyone on the earth and our balance with the earth. It's not just a one-sided story either. One of the elders there, Fussy Marks, you know, has his legendary quote of saying, you know, we're not just doing this for us. You know, we're doing this for, you know, what he, at the time, he called the white people. Well, what are they going to log? Like, just like that simplicity of saying, look, this is not just about the height of people. 
At the end of the day, that's what the fight is for, for everybody that respects this island and wants to call it home and, you know, for forever. Lyle Island wasn't just a blockade, it wasn't just a standoff, it was an exercise of our laws. The laws that, that are embedded in our culture that say we must protect this earth, we must protect the land, and we've got to find a better balance for how we live with the earth. That event got uh, national and, and international attention and resulted in the, the province of British Columbia and the federal government coming together and signing what we call the South Moresby Agreement. More than 20 years after its signing, it's still talked about as an agreement before its time. You know, under the, under the dual authorities, you know, both governments uh, create and uh, implement their own law. If you look at the first page of that agreement, it's you know, it's a it, it's a disagreement. It's an agreement to disagree, and the Haida are very clear that this is Haida land. The federal government is very clear this is Canada's land. And both parties agree to respect those opposing views and come together and work together. It's a model that is beyond consultation and accommodation and getting consent because we're jointly working together to find a solution. At its heart, it's reconciliation. It's finding a way to bring us together. And that was really emotional for young people because they, they, they thought we should not do that, you know. They said we shouldn't do that. When we put our foot down and said, we're going to do it for you people. We're going to do it. We are at this moment protecting our land. At this moment, we want our island back. Why don't the government see it? looking in the water you know we're asked we're looking for the same approach we're looking for equal say in how you treat the waters of Haida Gwaii including the resources within them we're talking about fish one of the the biggest problems on the coast right now is with the herring fishery because of basically the lack of herring herring and others are indicator species but they're also cultural keystone species you will see herring and salmon and cedar and other important resources like that throughout, mentioned many, many, many times throughout stories. And we know from that that they are really important beings that we need to protect. Herring are the signal of the food season in terms of the ocean. It's the first moment at which we stop eating from our freezers and we start eating from the ocean again. And I think everybody who lives on Haida Gwaii can appreciate coming out of the spring and the, the herring arriving, returning, uh, is a signal for that. Our concern around herring is that it's been closed for 10 years, and that's not necessarily the Haida shutting it down, it's, you know, DFO shut down herring fishery because it collapsed. We were pretty happy that it was shut down for the last 10 years because we just believe it hasn't recovered. And it was, I think it was starting to show maybe some optimism that it was gonna come back, but it wasn't anywhere close to, to being open. Herring are one of the main diets of spring salmon, which is very, very important to our diet, but it's also the diet for a lot of the killer whales. It just shows that anything that feed on herring are in jeopardy as it goes up, the food web. So we just started asking ourselves the question, well, why? Like, why are they opening the herring fishery when they know, you know, even the science of the time says, you know, it's not ready. The commercial fishery has always been like gambling in a way, I think. And that's what's going on really, is they're gambling with a resource and you know, hoping that it's gonna turn out all right. You know, maybe that's part of their job is to make educated guests. But if they don't get it right, then they're, they don't have any, uh, there's nobody responsible. You know. It should be an easy way for us to reach a solution together because the sustainability issues are clear. So that's kind of the root of the conflict, is DFO opens it, Haida Nation keeps said it's still closed. 
So what happens? It's going down this path where herring could potentially be the Lyle Island, you know, on the water where we're saying enough is enough. Like you can't continue to wipe out species that the Haida depend on with zero consequences. You know, for some Haida, Haida people, they have a tough time with that because they don't like the idea of sharing, considering that dark chapter. Some people say, why don't share with anybody when we got treated a certain way? But our elders taught us different. You know, they said, you know, that's how you feel, but that's not the right answer. The right answer is to coexist with our neighbor. You know, that's the roots of, of everything. The supernatural beings do not like to be uh, trampled upon. They're gonna um, cause uh, uh, mankind uh, some problems if we keep on abusing our earth, really. By quantifying nature, it's how much we can get out of it, how quickly we can get that into our bank accounts instead of having nature renew itself. It feels like the world is getting out of balance and that is a great cause of concern and that's really out of lack of respect. I think we're, yeah, we're very optimistic because you know, when you ask kids whether they're in grade kindergarten to graduation, do you guys know what Lyle Island is? You know, every single one of those kids, whether they're Hyde or not, know the story. Right? So it's up to us to make sure that they know the rest of the story so you know, that they can feel inspired to, uh, you know, to come work and protect Haida Gwaii. I mean, that's what it's all about. Balance is about sustainability. We know that life on Earth is always changing, but on the other hand, our place on this Earth should be about keeping balance and not taking more than we need and also taking so much that the other creatures can't sustain themselves.